Hello, welcome to another episode of In Power Health. It's a program that teaches you to have health in power and power in health. With information that we share, I'm Alex Asing alongside Dr. Myers once more. And, you know, for the past few weeks, we've been talking about, you know, uh, problems um, that we experience with our health and, you know, giving you information as it relates to these problems. But not just any we're not just scratching the surface but we get deep we really delve into um, you know what causes these problems that we have with our health and how we get the information the scientific information so you can have a clearer picture clearer idea of what's going on problems you may have and how you can heal yourself so uh, once again today doc we say welcome to um, welcome to our viewers and thank you for sharing all your information your expertise with us you know, uh, last week, one of uh, a few, not just one, a few of the viewers were, were really taken by the information that you shared um, and that you have been sharing because you explain things for the most part. They say you really explain things for them to understand and ask questions when they go to see their doctor. <laughs> Never looked at it that way. I, I am primarily interested in letting people know. You see, if I have somebody say in my yard like when i had my farm and somebody come and they helping me dig dig a hole a ditch mm -hmm. right right and i watch him and i say you just do this all the time you know he said yeah i say, he said why i say, well i notice when you're digging if i was digging in, i'd just dig but i notice you're taking your cutting shovel and you're cutting it right. in a certain way uh, and, and he it's laughed a technique and he, yeah and he said that's from experience mm. So I now want to dig into that experience. Okay. So I have that. So if I have to dig that the next time, I can, I can benefit off his experience and shortcut my work. Right. I love it. So the whole idea of what we're doing is really to, to show people how you arrive at things. We, we live in a society where they send us to school. Mm -hmm. And when they send us to school, the teacher says, um, you know, open your book on page five. And you read, right? And then the preacher says, well, watch that. Yeah, that might come for exam. Right. And that's it. So all you have to do is to go home and read the book right. because she'll ask you a question, by and large, that regurgitates that. Mm -hmm. And then when you come and you're doing all your exams right up to university, all it is is regurgitation of answers. Right. I got you. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'll give you an idea. I have a, a partner. And he was doing a course in mathematics in the university. <coughs> and the fellas and them say, boy, that guy, hard, you know, <laughs> work you over. And it have this particular um, theorem that he is due, which is some hard mathematics. Right. And, you know, you have to get it right. If you get, if you get it wrong, he tells you don't like it and things like that. So he says, the guy comes along and he teaches it. And he says, oh, all right, I understand it. So then he decided. Is there another way that you could work this? You know, is there another way to work this equation, another set of assumptions you could start with? Right. And he eventually found a Pakistani university where they had the problem and they elucidated the problem. Okay. But the way how they solved it was totally different. Mm -hmm. So he went and he learned that. You know. So the day, the, pro the day when he got the problem, he didn't work it the way how the guy showed him. Right. He worked it how... They, sh they do it in the Pakistani, pa Pakistani method, yeah. And seeing that the Pakistanis and the Indians, by and large, have a reputation for doing mathematics way above mm -hmm, everybody mm -hmm. else. Makes sense. All right. Um, he was all overjoyed. When he got back his paper, he got it wrong. Wrong. Thought so. And he said to the guy, he says, but, you know, this is the way. I went and, I went and dig that up. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show you something else you know what i mean he said i know how to do yours but i wanted to see if it had anybody else doing it any other way the guy says that don't count wow. you do it my way or you get it wrong yeah now the temptation was to to protest right. but then you get blackballed yeah so you begin to realize that uh. what happens is we we we're, we're teaching people how to stuff the book down inside the brain and not how to query things that's, that's the whole purpose of it, you know. You, you, so, so when you listen to people, you realize that they, they read something superficially mm -hmm. and they never question what they read. They never ask, well, you know. They, they just accept it. Okay, that's that, that's song it. in right, that's, that's song in wrong, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And you say, 
Uh. So I, I was thinking the other day, somebody asked me, I was talking to them about the prostate, and I started telling them, you know, the guy looked at me and he says, how come you know all that? So I smiled. So I looked up at what she was the last patient. Let's see, you, you really want to know? <laughs> yes, this is wrong, I'll tell you. I said, well, last year, I'm doing my prostate treatment. I'm using Sopalmetu and African Pygium and all these things. And, uh, and I guess you're right. But I said, and I said, when I was small, and I old, <laughs> right? You're looking at 75 years here, mm. right? So during the war and a little after, I was trying to remember, because by right, it should be like now. Everybody should have prostate problems. Nobody had prostate problems. Absolutely nobody. I had never heard of that. Right up till when I was 20 years old, I had never heard of that. And I left and I went to England. And I say, this is really weird. Why wouldn't they have it then and have it now? Mm -hmm. So I was looking up the theory and the guy says, well, when you get to a certain age, your testosterone changes to dihydrotestosterone. And it's the dihydrotestosterone that has caused the problems. Mm -hmm. Right. And it does also make extra estrogen. I see. That ain't sounding right. <laughs> so I'm talking to one of my partners and I tell him, I said, that ain't sounding right. He said, how oh, you could say that ain't sounding right? I said, well, God is not a stupid being. And I can't see him making people. And then in the middle of their life, something happening. I said, besides, when you're about 17 years old, the body for a short time takes the testosterone and make dihydrotestosterone. How come you don't end up with enlarged right. uh, uh, prostate, prostate at that time? How come you, everybody yeah. have sold prostate? Okay. That has gone for a few years. And listen to this. And when that dihydrotestosterone comes on, what it does, it speeds up probity. Okay. That is okay. the time when you, you, you make you, some you, big leaps and you, bounce. You get a hormonal rush. Yes. Mm. So therefore, dihydrotestosterone not bad for you okay how come it good here right. and how come it bad R right 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 okay now right away bells start clicking in my head yeah yeah, yeah now yeah. experience is a good thing i'll tell you why experience is a good thing many years ago i was working in novan pharmaceuticals and we got permission to make skin patches with estrogen you know oh, estrogen patches the estrogen patches okay I, was, I, I am proud to say I was very responsible for a lot of the techniques inside that. So, one day, the boss come and tell me, he says, um, we have some problems. The people who we buy the estrogen from, mm. they close down. So, we're going to buy five or six batches from five or six different companies, and we're going to run test batches. Now, the reason why he's telling me that is because I'm the maintenance yeah. engineer. So, I says, Okay, so you say we get everything ship shape and thing because we'll have to submit all the papers to the FDA and thing. So we run the five batches and we do tests mm -hmm. and all the tests come out wrong. None of the est estrogen get absorbed. So we had a meeting and they said, well, how come, you know, it's estrogen. So we called the chemist, he said, no, we put up in the spectrum analyzer, it's the exact same thing. Exact same molecules and everything. So I push up my hand and I say, what if when you do that, even though you have the same molecular things inside there, mm. that mm -hmm. maybe the pattern that the molecules sh take shape is slightly different according to the manufacturing process. Right. Wow. So even though your all your chemistry saying that it is that. Mm. It's not that for because on a molecular level, because we have it have to go through the skin and maybe that molecular shape don't allow it to go through the skin. So boss says, Well, the only thing we left to do is to um, go back and get more samples. Yeah. So when we get ten samples and we get ten and out of the twenty something samples that we did, little little tests on, yeah. we found two that worked. Right. All the others didn't work. That opened my head to what we call science. Yeah. What yeah. people say, this is science. Mm -hmm. Because according to that, all we were doing was a whole load of 
nonsense. <laughs> to put it in a very mild way. Yes. Yeah. Well, in the sense that we, 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 we came upon something that we didn't know. Right. And I'll tell you why I go into that example. So we, we finally got the product going with the ones that was working and everything. We had mm -hmm. a, a main one and a backup and everything. But when I first read that dihydrotestosterone in, in, a, in a youth, this kind of boosts the system to bring it through puberty into uh -huh, manhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you come down here and tell me that dihydrotestosterone here yeah. causing problems with your prostate swelling and all kinds of things like that. Bells ring in my head. Yeah. Ching, 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 that, ching, right? ching, ching, something wrong. Yeah. You know. So I went back on the drawing board. I said, well, it must have something that happens between here and here that causes the estrogen, the, the, the testosterone here to start making dihydrotestosterone. So when I reach a bounce like that, mm -hmm. that is where well so I write my request. Start digging. All right. No, no, no. Before I do that, you have to write your request okay. to the library. So I write my request to the library. You know how you just do that? How you do what? To write how you write your request to the library? Oh, okay, Because okay. you want specific right, information. Right. You send it up into the universe. Yes. I just do so. Bam. Yeah. Throw it up. <laughs> Say, all right, fellas. Stop the coffee drinking up there for a little bit. <laughs> we need and some answers. Something. And I, I left it alone. Yeah. A week later, Andy. On the, on the web, and Mercola newsletter has yeah. come to me, right? Yeah. And yeah. all this full of information. I so, I pull it up, and you have an article on a pesticide, atrazine. Okay? We talked about it before. Yeah, we well, have. Yeah, but, we I, have. But, but I'm talking about it now in the context of the discovery. Okay. Right? Okay. So, he's talking about atrazine and how atrazine. Now, I'd known about atrazine because I had a little book where the woman, a woman had done some work and she said that if you have atrazine in a pond mm. and you have little female, little male frogs inside there, yeah. give it a few months and all the male frogs will turn into female yeah. frogs. Yeah. So it means it changes. So Mr. Mercola decides to elaborate on that and he says not only does it change the f male frogs into female frogs fully, eh? Now you're talking about where you get a little change. You're talking mm -hmm. about the, all the penis and everything disappears and they grow womb and everything. Right. This drug does that. We eat things and we don't even have a clue as to what it is doing to us. I know, I know. So he says um, that if you have a woman and the woman lives in an area where they have atrazine and mm -hmm. it's polluting the waters and she's taking that water in with a child, a boy child, what happens is when the child is born, there's a great chance it will be born with a microphallus. Yeah. Right? In other words, a little, little piece. Right, right. And when they, when they showed it, there is a little, little thing, it's about two centimeters high. Yeah. So I realized that the drug doesn't only femini feminize frogs, it is feminine males too. Yeah, humans. Humans. So bell ring. And then he says, lower down, he says, this drug. One of the ways that it does that is to change the testosterone into yes. dihydrotestosterone. Right, right, right. So when I read that, I say, this dihydrotestosterone is slightly different from that yeah, one. Yeah. Because this one accelerates the, 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 the puberty. Yes. And this one destroys the, the male sexual organs. Yeah, that's totally because, because you, you begin to understand. Because not only does it, um, this dihydrotestosterone, interfere with the prostate it also depreciates the sperm count okay so you have another key now as to why your sperm count that was 180 to 200 million 20 years ago mm -hmm. is now 40 million mm -hmm. and when you go to the doctor and he sees 40 million he says oh this is good you know mm -hmm. but look a little deeper and, and then and then uh, what ha what is happening now is that they leave the doctor's office and come back <laughs> when I walk, they walk in. I always have good relationships with my patients. I know. So, okay. so um, see, I went on a gas spoon counter and went by the doctor, he tell me it's good. The wife could get pregnant with that. So let me see it. Let me see it. 40 million. 60% have bent heads. 20% have bent tails. 5% can't swim. 5% immobile. 
<laughs> so by the time he finished, he have about two yeah. percent that it, uh, of any use. And since mm. since ninety something percent of it bad, then the, the appear the set that look good on a normal microscope, put it on a finer microscope, and you find that it ain't as good as you think. Oh boy! So now you understand why we have people who have to go and do these artificial inseminations right, right. that most of the time don't work. It's a nice hustle. Right. I see. So, it is all good. So, going back, so we have <coughs> this dihydrotestosterone. So I begin to realize that the atrazine changes. So I say, well, if you have atrazine, and atrazine is from a particular molecular group, Right. So, like, if you look at, 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 at how the, the um, pesticide industry develop, you will see that a pesticide here is sometimes an addition on a pesticide here. Because this pesticide here, the bugs become immune to it. Right. So, so they make it a little more vicious, you know. But it's still coming out of that molecular mm -hmm. root. Mm -hmm. So I says, okay, I'm understanding that. So digging up, digging up, digging up. I say, well, okay, so it means that you have dihydrotestosterone, and the dihydrotestosterone goes in to the, to the, the, um, the prostate, prostate. Okay. and causes the prostate to swell. I say, okay. So then I say, then it means that when the, when the atrazine reaches a certain amount inside your body, it gets accumulated in the body fat, mm -hmm. it gets <coughs> accumulated in the liver, Right. And it reaches a critical point, it starts to feminize the man. Oh and it feminizes the man by killing it, his testosterone. So, what I would hazard, I guess, is if that was a little bit more, because it also raises the estrogen in the body, so it also means you get a little boobies too. Right. <laughs> Couldn't resist that one. I realize. <laughs> uh, so, you think that, so I say, okay. So like the fellas up there that really stop drinking coffee because I come and I get this book. I saw it recommended in one of my magazines and I bought it by the solution. Clement, mm -hmm. the acid alkaline balanced diet. Now to all intents and purposes this is talking about nutrition. Mm -hmm. So I open the book and I'm going through and I see obesity, cardiovascular disease, neurological disorders and I'm going down the road, long bone health, bam bam. Prostate problems and hormonal dysfunction. Oh my goodness. I say, wow. Bingo. So, the health of the prostate begins to degenerate when the acid alkaline ratio of its two principal hormones, testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, becomes imbalanced. Mm. So, she introduced. What a powerful first line. She introduced a new thing into it. Yeah. And the thing that she introduced into it is she says, when the acid alkaline ratio mm -hmm. it has to be a certain, a certain ratio a balance most of the foods you eat in off, off the street and wrong and everything yeah. and all the nice fried things that we oh eat Lord. all of them are extremely acid, acid yeah acidic. so what she's telling you is that your prostate gonna be worse if you eat in plenty acid foods in one sentence mm -hmm. right. so right away she put mom in Boom! When it becomes imbalanced. These two hormones work together but also oppose each other. Dihydrotestosterone promotes acidity while testosterone encourages alkalinity. Or to put it another way, if your body running alkaline, a little bit alkaline, you're working better. Everything, everything <laughs> running. For lots of reasons, more oxygen, all kind of thing. Yeah. But testosterone is an alkaline thing. So one of the things you're saying is that if you have the, the, the pesticide, and you're doing plenty acid stuff, mm -hmm. then you're in for plenty Ooh, trouble. Yeah, but my thing about it is that that high the, uh, the hydrotestosterone that you're making there, in the midst of that, all that toxins, is not exactly the same as the original one that you had when you were 17. Right, right, right. It okay. get, it okay. get, mm -hmm. right. right. It's the stress promoting acidic hormone, DHT. However, this, this rises excessively, causing the level of the life-promoting alkaline testosterone to drop. And she goes on, we will come back to it, 
But then she says something else that's rather nice. Hmm? Why prostate problems have become epidemic? According to a paper published in Grana Palynologica in 1960 by Eric Ask Upmark, MD of the University of Uppsala in Sweden, an enlarged prostate was at the time considered to be a new pathological condition. Yeah. So she got my attention even more yeah. because now she's agreeing with what mm -hmm. I said. And when I was small, it had no such stuff. Yeah. Right? Curiously, the processing of flour, more information, widespread by 1900, which removed v nutrients vital to the prostate, such as zinc, magnesium, vitamin E, didn't cause an epidemic of prostatitis or benign prostate hypertrophy as it did with coronary heart disease. Yeah. So one of the reasons that we started getting a rise in coronary heart disease is because we started processing the flour so much, we took out all the nutrients. Correct. And we did mention that on a few episodes already. Beautiful. This is because prostate enlargement has a different cause. An enlarged prostate glands were first noted in 1960. So before 1960, that was extremely rare. Correct. Insecticides such as DDT and chemical food additives had been in widespread use only for about 10 years. That is mm -hmm. after the war. Right? The chemical industry didn't get into high gear until a few years after the World War II was ending. So they're going to take five, ten years to build the plants. So 1945, 1955. By 1960, 65, you begin to see swollen prostates. Mm -hmm. By 1976, when 60% of the men over 60 in North America were found to have some prostate enlargement, insecticides chemi and chemical food additives had been in use for 25 years. Enough time for these chemicals to have caused an epidemic of prostate problems yeah. in older men. Yeah. So when I read that, you know what I did? Well, if you tell me what I did, you are boss. And I was actually going to be a little cynical, but I don't think my be cynical. It's it's ridiculous. I I don't know. I, I was thinking, wow, what have Ask ask me what I did. Okay, what do you do, Doc? <laughs> well, are you working good? <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> You know, you just get when you ask for things yeah. and you get it back. You know, you're in communication. You right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is this is spot on information. Okay, okay. And I just pick up a magazine and happen to see this, and it 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 catch my eye, as you say. Right? And I pick up the thing and I, 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 and I send send me my, my um, credit card. Boom, and I get my book. You bought your book one day. Right. So. Medical researchers suspect that an increase in enzyme five alpha reductase the enzyme that triggers the excessive growth of prostate tissue is caused by pesticides and industrial yeah. solvents. The problem with the manufactured chemicals is that they cannot be broken down in the, dig the digestive tract, deactivated by the liver, or excreted by the kidneys or lungs. So they are either stored in the liver or go back into the circulatory system. Along with the acid waste from undigested foods, they are deposited by the circulating blood inside the tiniest capillaries, some of which carry oxygen and nutrient to the prostate. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, you understand? Killing the prostate. Right. So she said, um, along with the acid foods, um, the rest of it clogs the capillaries and prevent the prostate from getting sufficient nutrients and oxygen. She so begin to understand it is a totally man-made problem. Mm -hmm. It is. And how do you say, we are a little country. You think the Minister of Health couldn't understand all these things and call all the fellows and say, listen, we're not using these pesticides anymore. Mm -hmm. Let us use organic pesticides. Okay. Let us take out the, the estrogen out of the chicken. Let us take out the steroids out of the chicken. Let us take out the antibiotics out of the chicken. And let only charge 50 cents or a dollar more a pound. Right, right. Because when you eat it, you know you won't get sick. Because the massive bill that we help bill will drop dramatically. Of will. But that is too much common sense. Mm. You understand? Yeah. I think we're catching on, you know, <laughs> But Slowly, but we're, we're catching on. We're getting there. So, so I, I, I mean, this, this, this book really kind of put it all together. So she says, 
This is because the testosterone dihydrotestosterone ratio is reversing. Now, but before that, when men enter in their 40s begin putting on weight in their abdominal region, they notice their muscles have weakened, their shoulders have narrowed, they don't feel energetic as they once did, and they sometimes feel low. This is because the testosterone dihydrotestosterone is reversing. Testosterone essence have dropped because it is being converted to dihydrotestosterone mm. by the accumulative poisons that you're taking from the pesticides. Hmm. Elevated DHT is accompanied by increasing estrogen levels. So what that pesticide is doing, it is attempting to feminize you. Mm. So when they tend to feminize you and, and the dihydrotestosterone takes away your testosterone, right? And your little fella that you have who you was proud of was a certain size, <laughs> suddenly <laughs> start to get smaller, right? On top of that, normally you used to march down the road, doom, yeah. doom, doom, doom. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you doing? What are you doing? Are, 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 yeah. Are you hearing questions? Um, Where is that? <laughs> oh, man. That's just mean, dog. <laughs> no, I mean, that's what, that's what patients come and tell you. Yeah. Hey, man, you know, it ain't clicking. Right? If elevated DHT is accompanied by increasing estrogen levels, together they increase the acidity mm. in the prostate, and by doing so, decrease the alkalinity. Yeah. So when you decrease the alkalinity, whatever testosterone you have in the system yeah, can't boy. even get into exactly. the system. Gosh. Right? Men and women have the same hormones only in different ratios. Right, right. During puberty, and dihydrotestosterone also becomes elevated, but for a good reason. They stimulate the growth of cells, bring the penis, testicles, prostate, and secondary characteristics to maturity. So, you see, you, we come and we see it here again. If the dihydrotestosterone um, brings you to puberty, listen to it. It means that, you know, when you was going through puberty, what happened? You was going along pitching marble and flying kite, and one day you're suddenly going down the road and you do so. <laughs> Who's that? And you, and, and you look at it passing. <laughs> Ladies, I don't mean anything wrong by saying it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> We're talking, as, as, as Trump would say, man talk. Yeah. Right? You see, you see, the, see the nice lady pass there. You look at it. And, and you're getting all kinds of stirrings. Yeah. It means the dihydrotestosterone inside, yeah. they're bringing you to a point. Everything increasing in size mm -hmm. and all kinds of things. How come 50 years later, it decreasing it? Mm. You, you, you get my drift? Right. The dihydrotestosterone that you're making at 50, I could put my head on a block has a different molecular structure than the one that was at 17. Right, right. Even though they say it's the same thing. Yeah. And the only reason I can say that is because I was in the business and I knew. Right? So, then as men enter the middle of old age, their hormone level begins to resemble the levels of their adolescent years. Mm -hmm. So, if it resembles that, why aren't they like that? Yeah. It's because the dihydrotestosterone that you're having Testosterone again diminishes an enzyme in the prostate, 5 alpha reductase, converts it to DHT, and the estrogen levels in shop. So, mm -hmm. on top of that, now you know how to deal with extra estrogen. When you have excess estrogen inside a man, you know what you're having. Mm -hmm. What are you having? What are you going to get next? Well, it's not like the frogs, it might just change. What you're going to have after that mm -hmm. is prostate cancer. Oh, prostate cancer. Oh my gosh. Because the level that. of the estrogen inside the prostate is going to go up. Okay. Cancerous. So testosterone, so he says, high testosterone and DHT levels and a decline in testosterone, the culprits in prostate dysfunction, cause the excessive growth of the prostate tissue, diminishes the sex drive, and are responsible for fewer and less viable sperm being produced. Mm -hmm. So here you have the whole answer. So that is why when I was young, and you have a fellow down the road, and he's 85, 90 years old, and somebody get pregnant for him, nobody didn't used to get, hey, boy, the old man's still kicking. Mm. But why? Huh? Now you're lucky if you could do it at 50. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Moreover, the drop in testosterone places an the body on emergency alert. Excessively high DHT, along with estrogen, causes the adrenal hormones to become permanently elevated. So your, 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 your 
um, adrenals, mm -hmm. now trying to salvage it. So it goes boom and it kicks in. And you're in your 50s, 60s after a whole lifetime of stress. So what happens next? You can get a heart attack. You get what? Heart problems. That too. But what it means is that very quickly your hormones get exhausted. Okay. So your adrenals ah, stop working properly. All right. All right. Ooh. There's even less energy. Yeah. Yeah. So when your adrenals stop working properly and your cortisol level goes down, allergies start to come up that you okay. never had before. You, 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 you begin to kind of put the thing together. Right. That you're going. That's what I want to do. You see, I want everybody who's sitting down listening mm -hmm. begin to say, wait, we're in the middle of a state where we have to try to do something. Right? Maybe we had to start growing our own um, non-genetically modified vegetables in the backyard mm -hmm. and buy organic pesticide to spray on it. So we don't mm -hmm. get all this, uh, we minimize the amount that, of that's DDT. That's exactly what we're going to have to don't do. Don't buy nothing in a box in the um, grocery. Mm -hmm. well. you, if, you, if you take a, a box in the grocery with all these cereals and they make, and you look up the chemicals that it, two or three of them chemicals is cause cancer. What they're doing inside there? Maybe one of these days we'll go through all of them. I think so. It is, it is, it is, it is funny, you know. It's frightening. So the, the, the adrenal hormones now go permanently elevated. This in turn causes the muscles, nerves, heart and lungs to become chronically overactive. Mm -hmm. And when they become chronically overactive, doctors say, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, but um, I noticed recently that your blood pressure start to climb. They say, well, doctor, is that? Oh, that is old age. That is not old age. Mm -hmm. That is what we're talking here. While depressed levels of the alkaline forming testosterone level slow up, the digestive processes as well as the cyclical death regeneration of cells, all of that begins to give trouble. This gives rise to excessive acid waste byproducts. The elevation of stress promoting estrogen is particularly lethal because it destroys oxygen. Mm. Mm. This causes the blood to clot, thyroid functions to slow up, which means it interferes with the heart, the alteration of fats and oils, and an increase in histamine levels, so your cholesterol goes up, your, your HDL goes down, your LDL go up. It's right? a variety of problems. The high dihydrotestosterone levels and low testosterone levels explain why when a man's prostate becomes large, he's more likely to develop arthritis, become subject to low-grade infection, lose vitality, and sharpness of intellect. So you see your partners and they reach 60, 65, and still they do the, you're right, they, they start to slouch, and the whole energy is a zoom. And you're wondering if that's the same person that you saw, mm -hmm. you know, six months ago. And some people think that's normal too. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> this, just in this one page, you begin to understand how you, you begin to track things. And when yeah. you begin to track things, and you begin to connect it, you begin to see why this one is affecting that one. And when it affects that, why it affects that, 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 and that. Interconnectivity. Mm -hmm. So you, you reach 65, you've never had an ache or pain in your life. I remember that happening to me. And I'm coming on a flight from Los Angeles to Miami. And the, the plane was rather cold, which normally doesn't affect me. And halfway through the flight, I realized my knees are hurting me. Mm -hmm. So I had to get up and kind of flex them and go back and sit down and say, what the hell is this? Where does this come from? I've never had this. And then you begin to understand all these things and where they're coming from and, and what they're doing. And then what you're going to do to take this and slow it down as best as you can. Mm. So Correct. Having, having dealt with, with that for a long time, I found out also that when you have this dihydrotestosterone, one of the things that you have to do is to try to prevent it from getting into the prostate. prostate. <coughs> So, one of the things that you use to do that is saw palmetto. Mm -hmm. Saw palmetto, you know, is you have these, I just call them lock, as they call it, lock and keys, so things just get in, right? right? 
If you're taking soap and it will just come and block it. So the dihydrotestosterone can get into the prostate. Okay. African pine, pygium, same thing, help to block it. Zinc, help oh, to zinc block it. Too. <coughs> yes? Okay. Zinc is also unique in another way. Um, when they first started having um, blocked arteries because of hydrogenated oil and things, they noticed that the people who were working in zinc mines never got blocked arteries. Okay. And that if you had somebody blocked arteries and they went to work in a zinc mine, six months later it gone. Why? Because he breathed in zinc dust yeah. all the time. The and shop. zinc just cleaned the plaque out of your arteries. Oh, that's why it's good. Isn't that, um, you can get in vitamin C as well? Yes, yeah, sometimes they put it that zinc. zinc. Yeah, because zinc does increase your immune system. Okay. That's so when I you take it with zinc, you have a cold, it has helped to stop the cold very quickly. Right. But, here the fun. Okay. If you're taking too much zinc, you have to be very careful because zinc does rob the body of copper. And copper is another interesting trace I, I element. Never even have considered. Okay, copper. Right? So you have to take a little extra copper in order that the zinc don't deplete your copper and then all the problems that you have with the depleted copper yeah. begins to show. I, I'm showing you how the whole yeah, thing... Yeah, everything is, works is, together and yeah, it's a balance. It's, it's like, you, you know what the body is like? It's like when you go to, 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 um, to a classical music concert con con and they have the whole symphony orchestra mm -hmm. and they have this guy directing and he goes... When you do that, do is you start and you stop and you start, right? And he have to be dead on. Correct. Right? Wow. I think I remember reading a thing about, I think it was Toscanini. And you went to direct the, um, the New York Philharmonic. And you say, what make this guy so great, you know? So you go and he, knock on it. <laughs> he hand up. And he, he direct. He said nothing, just direct. So, when he finish, he say, all right. He say, you there, on the third bar, in the third note of that thing, you was off. You there, your timing was on. He point out everybody who made a mistake wow. in the orchestra and what part of the music they made a mistake. He said, now, can we sharpen up? <laughs> And then everybody begin to understand what it is he doing. He's a he's a whiz. Mm -hmm. He was so far above them that they can't they couldn't even appreciate that. Yeah. If I say the next time the orchestra play, everybody strive to get it spot on because yeah. they know he'd look and say, "You would hear yeah. it if it's off." Yes. Wow. Okay. The point I'm making is pretty amazing. That's how the body is. That's how the body. That's how the the big conductor upstairs do right. it. Right. It's a whole orchestra. You can't go and put a man who you know nothing about piano to play the piano. Mm -hmm. And you can't put somebody who come in stoned to go and play the violin. It, it, it just ain't gonna happen. You understand? So what we're talking about is the things that is get you stoned. So here <laughs> she says, um, if you take Listen to the herbs that will shut down the, 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 the dihydrotestosterone. Okay. Red clover, Pygium, Pygium africanum, saw palmetto, stinging nettle, golden seed, zinc. But then she says, there are ways to shrink back the prostate. And my mind went, nice. Something to shrink back the prostate? Yeah. When that is the main problem we have. So she says, let me, let me pick it up here. Along with the acid waste from un undigested food, they are deposited by the circulator into the tiniest capillaries, right, we said, some of which carry oxygen and nutrients to the prostate. Furthermore, some of this toxic waste seeps out of these capillaries into the extracellular fluid surrounding the prostate and inflames it. So all that acid waste and things like that causes all that problem. Mm -hmm. So anybody who reading this know that the first thing you're going to have to do if you're going after the prostate is you're going to have to alkalinize it. Right. You'll have to make it problem. alkaline. Yeah. Yeah. You have to take out, clean out some of the acid waste and all kinds of things. 
The other thing is that dihydrotestosterone is gets stored in your body fat. All around the one around your waist. You know? Okay. So the next thing is you've got to go out and do a lose weight and, and to purge yourself, otherwise you're gonna be in for some real thunder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she says the partial cutoff of nutrient oxygen is especially harmful to the prostate gland because of its poor supply. This could explain why three amino acid supplements, alanine, glycine, and glutamic acid, are effective in reducing prostate enlargement. Mm -hmm. As doctors H. M. Feinblatt and J. C. Gant found in their crossover study of patients with enlarged prostates, and they have the reference mm, research research paper, mm. the connection between manufactured chemicals and the deterioration of the prostate glands in a majority of men over 60 in the past 40 years out of the importance of avoiding foods with chemical additives and drinking distilled water. In other words, what are the things that you have to start to do mm -hmm. in order to kind of slow that down? Otherwise, you're in pain. So, like myself, I looked at it and I said, well, why would alanine, glycine, and glutamic acid shrink the prostate? Mm -hmm. You have to ask questions and everything, you know. I mean, you say, I go in and find these, and they're not so easy to find. They're not, they're not mm -hmm. off the shelf you can buy. But I did find one uh, guy, one of, the, one of the more progressive doctors in the United States who make his own supplements. And he already has that in it. So it means he was way ahead of me in, in finding out stuff and making things. Okay. So, I said, why? And going along, and I went off to, to Nevada. Um, came back last week. I went to do a course on ozone therapy okay. and re, 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 rebuilding joints and all kinds of nice. things like that. Right? It was really very interesting. So I was talking to one of the doctors there. And he said, um, he said, you don't know why? I said, no, tell me. He said, those are the three amino acids that you have in what you call the precum. Mm. Because the precum comes out of the prostate. Right. Now, what is the purpose of the precum? That thin liquid that comes out. Right. I think that, that's just, the just before you get overexcited. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but the one time <laughs> in your life you has ball of God. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Doctor. You, you, you know, you bump to, to pre then. That, that's that's the lubricate. I think that's that's to to give the um the sperm a, a, a way to travel. Yeah. Am I right? If we become in a real <laughs> dude man way. Yes, it makes sense. It tins, it tins the, 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 the sperm liquid coming out of the testicles. Right, right, right. Without that, we would have no body being born because mm. that is a thick jelly and nothing to move it. Right, so right. when that precum hits it, it takes it and it makes it very fluid right. and very volatile. And then all the sperms and then say, all right, fellas, yeah. it's a race to the top. There we go. <laughs> right. Imagine you have 150 million and only one going to make it. Yeah. You see? Even when you was in the womb, you was a bad dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you beat 150 million. I did it. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, is, now is you, you had to beat 5 million. <laughs> the odds go. <laughs> Not nice. Oh, gosh. I mean, you have to make a joke of these things sometimes in order to appreciate the seriousness of, of what course, it is you're talking about. Of the situation. So, you, you, so you, gather, you, gather, you gather what I'm, what I'm, what I, what I'm saying. Is that here... I decided not to take, you know, you know, when books are written, medical books mm. are written, modern ones, you can begin to see the influence of the drug companies in how the book is written. You take that same book and it was written 50 years ago and you get way more information than what you get yeah. now. Yeah. But now you're beginning to have people who are doing research, checking the research papers and writing a lot of things on their own. Okay. So having a lot of <coughs> little fellas printing books and things all over the place and then you have the web god bless the web hmm. you know the information super the highway. information super highway and it have people who are beginning to know how to use it you know of course and i'd say one thing uh, if you have any doctors listening to this show better get your act together because you're using drugs and what happens now is that your patients are beginning to question the drugs. Mm -hmm. And when you try to tell them all some kind of 
you know, Mumbo fairy Jumbo. tale, you know, some kind of Cinderella story. They say, no, no, that is not it. Yeah. Look, <coughs> I get this off the web. This is all the side effects. So it means that the patient who 20 years ago couldn't question because they didn't have access right. to the information, right. Right. now question. <coughs> so yes. you have a revolution going on very quietly. Mm -hmm. And you notice that the, the doctors who are successful are the ones who are out there questioning and saying, this is what, so if I'm giving you this thing to drop your blood pressure, this is what will happen. I could give you this, this different from that, this is what might happen. We'll give you that. We be, be open about it so people yes. would, would be able to make better so, decisions yeah. and know. Otherwise you're going to lose your, you're going to lose your clientele. Yeah. And yeah. It, would, it has started and it is going to escalate. It's going to escalate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People come to me and they say, look, I had this blood test, doc, tell me what, tell me what wrong with it. They say, well, what happened to you, doctor? Yeah, but you didn't tell me anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I went on the web and I checked this. Mm. And this is what I find out. And I just come to ask you if that is true. If, I, if, I, if that is a good summation. So people are beginning to think and put things together. That's great. Keep it you up, know? guys. And <coughs> that, that is what we're talking about. So... You, you begin to see the, 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 the pattern of how a person like me would come to all this information and then say, whoa, no, I can't stop the pesticides because I don't have the power to stop them. And if, if, I, if, if, if I had the advice this government, I would say, hey, call a thing and call the farmers and say, we're stopping that. Of course, what will happen is the big corporations might want to dump on you and put pressure on you. But that's another story. Mm -hmm. um, and try to minimize all these things. And then your health bill will go down dramatically. Definitely. Because people won't be as sick. You know, everybody dumping on Russia. You know, Russia has no genetically modified foods. Yeah. Most of the pesticides that they have are not allowed into it. They don't want that. Yes. So there, there are countries that see after the well-being of the, 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 the people you know the scandinavian they countries focus are, on health. are notorious for that mm -hmm. you know we don't want no mercury fillings mm -hmm. because that has caused problems we don't want this we don't want that fluoride we don't want no fluoride it goes so bad in the, in in, in mm -hmm. um england couldn't export uh processed foods to to europe because they use fluoride water and they say if you have fluoride in the cans, you can't bring it in because fluoride destroys the thyroid. Yeah. Fluoride destroys the pineal gland. Flu you know, and, and you keep going on and on and on. Fluoride makes your IQ drop. Poisons the mind. We have enough scientific evidence to prove that. Mm. So, so therefore you get that and you say, hey, this is, this, is, this is how you do it. So for instance, if you're taking um, sopalmetu, African pygium, all of these, which is block, they will, they will do nice, but it doesn't reduce the five alpha reductase, which is the problem causer because of the dihydrotestosterone. Okay. So, <coughs> what you have to do, studies show that um, the five alpha reductase, sorry, could be reduced by sopalmetal, not the others, zinc and alpha linoic acid. But here the catch. When you take all three of these supplements to reduce the ALA, you still run a risk that men in the highest quartile of taking ALA had four times the risk of prostate cancer compared to really? those to, to mutate and become malignant. So you have to be careful. You could take something to stop it, but at the same you time, could you could set to trigger it. Let me give you an idea. Women used to take estrogen right when they pass their menopause in order to stay as they define healthy mm -hmm. that's that what i used to make skin patches for for menopausal women and right. they used to continue taking it it raised the estrogen level when it raised the estrogen level it made them prone to be breast cancer so they had to stop they had to slow it down yeah that they put smaller doses and all kinds of things right and it still is a heavy risk of course so when you reduce the five alpha reductase, you also have problems. You can have problems with the extra estrogen too. So they say that um, you, when you 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 raising the levels of fiber excessively, like lower them, can cause prostate cells to mutate and become malignant. So whether the five alpha reductase is too high or whether it's too low, 
using so palmetto could cause problems and especially early right alpha lipoic acid which is very good for for shutting out the al the five alpha mm -hmm. reductase but there is something that you can use which will normalize the five alpha reductase and wouldn't cause any problems i will tell you what it is you will laugh vitamin c and green tea on green tea mm -hmm. maybe that is why the whole chinese guys don't get prostate problems they say now they whole day and they're drinking green tea meal time green tea yes every time green tea in the middle of the day green tea mm -hmm. you know so green tea and vitamin c will drop the five alpha reductase safely without any crazy side effects i like that hmm? put green tea on the list so she says that she had a friend who um had prostate uh, cancer that spread to the lymph nodes and they operated on him and then he wanted to stay cancer free so what he's been doing is been drinking green tea every day since then and it's now uh, five nine years and he's Ooh. still cancer free i love it you know now the thing about the prostate enlargement is you say okay you now find out that if you had three amino acids and those three amino acids are normally in in the the precum right so is glycine 50 milligrams a day alanine 50 milligrams a day glutamic acid 50 to 100 milligrams a day so okay. you take that and over a period of a few weeks it will shrink back the prostate okay now what else will help the prostate uh, to, to, to reduce mm -hmm. Hmm? thyroid supplements so you have to bring your okay. thyroid up and nowadays in, in people over 60 I would say probably 60 70 percent of the people thyroid are not working properly and the thing about it is that they, that doing the thyroid measurement as we have I mean I think we spoke about that that the assumptions under which the test was set up broader bands and them show that it was wrong okay and that it shouldn't be used like that so what they designed they designed a, a alternative test that would help to qualify or disqualify the readings that you get from your from your thyroid mm -hmm. and that is you get yourself a body temperature thermometer one of the little ones that you use has measured just a few degrees where the body temperature mm -hmm. is and you take it and you put it under your arm while you're still in bed in the morning you leave it there for 10 minutes we talked about this before, mm -hmm. right? And when you take it out 10 minutes, you read it, write it down, shake it down, put it back, clean it, put it back. The next day you do it, you put it down, you put it out. It should come out around 98.6. Okay. That is, that is the body temperature. Yeah. 98.6. Uh, Fahrenheit? Yes. Okay. So, if it, if it, um, <laughs> If it is consecutively a degree, a degree and a, and a half below, you're hypothyroid. Ah, if it is consecutively okay. a degree or a degree and a half above, above, then you're hyperthyroid. Most people hmm. I give it to, they're normally hypothyroid. Even though their thyroid readings are saying good. But they sit down in the air conditioner and tell you they're feeling cold. They tell you they're putting on weight. They tell you they're feeling tired. Yeah. You know, all them things are signs that thyroid. something ain't right. Mm. You know? Okay. So... You use thyroid supplements to bring up the bring up the working of the thyroid. There's iodine, or you know, right? Um, you have what they call natural supplements. Um, you have pregnenolone. That is a an, a hormone. All right. right. I haven't heard that one before. Uh, whenever you have a woman, and she has bleeding problems, right? She has cysts and things like that. She has bleeding problems. She's creating extra estrogen. Then the problem is that they, <coughs> they say you have hormonal imbalance. But again, mm. when they tell you you have hormonal imbalance, they don't tell you why you have all mm. hormonal imbalance. Maybe we, should, maybe we should do a program on that. Yeah. Women and, 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 and problems that they have. I and think why, so. What causes that hormonal imbalance? Definitely. So all she has to do is to get some pregnenolone cream. No, sorry. Not pregnant, one, progesterone, yes. progesterone cream, and put a little bit on, rub it on, you know, every day, according to the recommendations. And it raises the progesterone in the body, and 
the bleeding stops. Okay. For our periods, the heavy bleeding. And in this case, what we're talking about is pregnenolone here. So my in the speed, you get everything mixed up as you're running along. One to five milligrams a day. Um, go off ever so often for one week. So men will take a little pregnenolone to help with the bringing down the mm -hmm. prostate enlargement. Raw carrots. Oh, I love raw carrots. Eat one or more car raw carrots a day to reduce inflammation. Mm. Vitamin B6. It must be taken with zinc to facilitate its absorption. Okay. They both work synergistically yeah. to get into the prostate. Raw organic sunflower seeds and pollen, bee pollen. Oh. One of the things that works very, very good for prostate right. is you, you take your greens in the morning and you throw in a teaspoon of bee pollen. And if, 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 you, if you have it, a little piece of propolis. You know it's propolis? No, I don't. No. Propolis is the a resin that is put inside the bee, the beehive. The bees is lining it in order okay. to prevent disease. Oh, well, so it is very, water. very strong yeah. antibacterial and things like nice. that. Nice. Um, keep an intake of, um, of foods high in alpha, -lino alpha -li linoic acid. Right? Linolenic acid, sorry. Um, no. Keep intakes of foods at high al a level of alpha linoleic acid to a minimum. This includes flaxseed, soybeans, canola oil, commercial sal um, salad dressings, and margarine. Margarine? Yes, all the, all the, all the, um, the hydrogenated oils, but also flaxseed and soybeans. Okay? Okay. Red clover extract, 50 milligrams a day. Okay? So you, 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 you know red clover, it grows in the yard. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, stinging nettle, 600 milligrams a day. Preferably sometimes the root and from the red stinging nettle. Pygium, 200 milligrams a day. Vitamin E, 800 to 1600 units a day. Vitamin E is a prostate cancer preventative. According to a controlled study done in Finland and co-authored with Dr. Demetrius Albanis, of the National Cancer Institute. And then you do caprylic acid, 40 to 1,000 milligrams a day. Right. This is in buffered form, which is effective for prostate infection caused by fungus. Yeah. And the PSA is normally a sign that if the fungus in your, in your prostate overacting. Right. Wow, right. Doctor, that was so comprehensive and very important, especially for today's lifestyle. Yes. And all the problems that we're seeing. Many men have problems with their prostate. Question. I'm not Question. sure. Ask. Ask and dig, dig a little bit. Dig a little bit. Jump on the information superhighway. <clears throat> Get as much information and as you And when you, you dig and you find the information, take the preventative action. Mm -hmm. I have stopped <clears throat> eating. I can't tell you last time I've eaten chicken. Mm. I don't eat it. I don't believe that. And I think that if everybody in Trinidad who get to find out about the chicken, stop eating chicken, mm. then one day the fellows who are hustling and making money from it mm. will have to stop and say, let us stop putting, just as how it is happening in the States. Now you could go into the grocery and it says, no, no antibiotics, right? No this, free range, right. bam, 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 right? No estrogen. So, so already you have manufacturers in the States who are beginning to realize that they're losing market yeah. share because the people are becoming very wise. That's already been done. All right, so that's, that's what we're talking about. Thank you very much, Doctor. Until next week, enjoy the rest of your day. This has been In Power Health.